I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we examine a powerful book. It is called Almost a Christian. It is written by Dr. Dorset Smith, MD. This enlightening book calls for a return to absolute biblical truth, challenging today's liberal and man-centered theology. Today, we will delve into crucial issues like homosexuality, abortion, eschatology, and explore the need for repentance and true Christ-centered faith. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his remarkable book. The links are below this interview. Doctor, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Tell us what inspired you to write this book, Almost a Christian, and address these uh, topics that some people call controversial. Well, I think... Uh... Most of the readers would agree with me that uh, this world is in great decline, mm -hmm. as is the church. And people are saying, where's the church? We see all these negative events. And where are the church leaders speaking out about uh, abortion, rioting, uh, Israel and all these other issues. And uh, the answer is the church is in really serious decline. Mm. And the reason is we have lost our way is we don't really teach the hard truths of scripture. Mm. And we're, we've been for the last generation sort of man-pleasing and uh, we know that the, the, there's a cost to Christianity, and the cost is uh, giving up your your life and and moving forward with Christ. Uh, if you go to Matthew sixteen twenty one, and thereafter, you know that it's very clear that Jesus said, "Unless you give up all, you cannot follow me." And uh, that, <laughs> we tend to avoid that statement, but it's really uh, the essence of the gospel is death to self and having a new life in Christ. So yeah. when we look at the church, we see that the number of Christians is declining. In Europe, it's estimated that that number of Christians is one or two percent. Scotland is 2%. What about America? Well, 50, 60% of people in America claim they're Christians, but uh, somewhere 50, 60% have uh, theological uh, beliefs such as reincarnation, uh, the uh, satanic uh, worship, all, all kinds of uh, occult things are co believed commonly by the average churchgoer, which is amazing. And uh, the book I wrote to explain what's happening in America and what the biblical worldview is and solutions. Mm -hmm. So it's just not complaining saying, hey, yeah. this is positive, and that God has a plan, and you can be part of this plan by reading my book, mm -hmm. and you'll see that I don't hold back on any issue, and I try to explain how to respond to issues. We go from homelessness all the way through how to pray for the sick, uh, how uh, to uh, deal with uh, unforg unforgiveness. Uh, it's really a panoply of many issues that the average reader faces every day. So it's not just simply uh, talking about how to be a Christian, but what the being a Christian means in this world we live in. So I think 
uh, you'll uh, really enjoy it because um, the uh, focus is broad. So there's something for everybody. Oh, exactly. It is tough being a Christian today. Um, just look what happened to that football player who recently gave a commencement address oh, where he espoused Catholicism, where he denounced abortion, where he talked about how women are often very happy in the house. Um, you know, we get canceled today by the secular forces in society if we believe a man is a man created by God and a woman is a woman created by God and everything else in between is just something made up by people. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, feminism has been a problem for the church from, for many centuries. And uh, it, the, uh, Many of the more liberal churches have female bishops, leaders that are women. And uh, I find this is unbiblical. And I say that understanding that uh, many women uh, feel that uh, it hurt that when a man says this is the way it is. But if you read... First Peter chapter three and many other scriptures, it's very clear that men need to be men. And part of the problem is women sometimes undercut their husbands or other men. And so men are weak and a strong woman is not only unbiblical, but they prevent uh men from being in proper leadership hmm. so men are silenced and women are running for um president to every office and uh, unfortunately this is something that destroys our culture the yeah. the, uh, the hope of our culture is the family and a biblical family where the man is the head of the family, the woman is uh, a mother and with children, if if blessed by God. And when uh, we see the American family today on television, um, we see a different view of family. We see the woman always is a leader and this is unfortunate yeah and men are emasculated uh one of the calls of that football player was to embrace masculinity Amen. you know to be a man again Amen. and that's controversial can you imagine telling <laughs> people to embrace masculinity is controversial yeah. it is very controversial but uh i'd I wish we had the time to go back to Genesis and talk about God's creation, what he said to man, you know, in uh, verse 127, he tells Adam to, to overcome, to put his foot on the neck of Satan, hmm. to stand up and take leadership in the creation. And uh, he, the, Satan and his minions were already present in the get garden. And man had the responsibility of taking authority over Satan. And uh, unfortunately, he was duped by the serpent and, and, his, and his wife. But, uh, you know, there's, uh, I, I, when I teach, uh, well, Bible studies they often point out that the first uh, three chapters in Genesis end up with the last three chapters in Revelation. Hmm. And we see the contrast between man giving, being given the ruler as a, uh, to take dominion, it says in chapter one of uh, Genesis, 
and falling and then Christ coming as the solution and being restored. So you have the fall and then the restoration and then you have the rest of the 66 books in between. And, you know, it's it's encouraging for people to read particularly chapters 21 and 22 of Revelation about the garden was there is restored. The the, the uh, tree of life is there. The streams, the river of life is there. All the thing that was lost in in uh, at chapter three of Genesis is restored. And so we have these bookends, which is the story of God's dealing with man. And that's what we get into a little bit about how. God had a solution, which was costly. He had cost the death of his own son. And we are all... Forget that God wants us to give all to him. And it's... It's, he wants to restore man and restore the garden, which he promises to do and did at the end of Revelation. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. The name of the book is Almost a Christian by Dr. Dorset Smith, MD. Of course, it's called that because being almost a Christian really <laughs> isn't good enough. Uh, and that's what we see a lot of today. Oh. It is a powerful book that calls for a return to absolute biblical truth, challenging today's liberal and man-centered theology. It delves into crucial issues like abortion, homosexuality, eschatology, and it looks and explores the need for repentance and true Christ-centered faith. Doctor, thank you so much for being our guest today on Spotlight. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your time. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.